Hey folks, it's Omar here from whistletowhistle.com and it's my pleasure to bring to you just a short interlude on some thoughts on the Instagram Reels drills that I've been posting. Now, we've had a tremendous response from you folks regarding the drills and we've had some stunning comments and some great DMs. So thank you, keep that going. I think we've had something like 330,000 views in this last week of the drills that we've put up. Now, the reason for my video today is actually to explain something around the jackal. Everybody likes talking about the jackal, how to get into breakdowns, create chaos using the dark arts of the jackal. Now, a lot of my drills are layered. They are layered so that you create effective jackal, jacklers who can withstand clean outs, who can pull for the ball or counter ruck and create absolute havoc within that breakdown. So we've had some comments like, oh, you're coaching hands on the ground. You know, all my future referees or the guys who are referees or guys who think they're going to be referees who don't read the context of the drills as I explain them in the explanation. So for example, I explain the base layer of this drill is jackal entry into posterior resistance and surviving clean out. But I'll straight away say, oh, but you told them to put their, your hands on the ground. Now you've got to you read the comments of how I explain the drill because if you want to build a great jackler, one that creates havoc, you're going to need the three base layers we're going to explain now. And to get that, sometimes you cannot just coach getting in and lifting up the ball. In fact, a lot of the drills that I've seen online or from other people sending me their drills are all long body based. So they have got a high entry, they don't enter quickly, their arms are long, their necks are long. There's a lot of space to be cleaned out, there's a lot of space to be smashed. And they're actually putting their jacklers in danger. So most of the best jacklers in the world, if you watch a lot of rugby, you would have noted that they are borderline illegal. And the reason for that is if you're vaguely high, you get smashed and you won't pull for the ball. And worse, you won't even have an effect on breakdown speed. So let's go through a couple of things that I think will enlighten you while watching my reels and watching this YouTube channel. And the good news is we're going to be posting on here a lot more drills with a lot more explanations. We can get through, get to our YouTube site or you get to our YouTube channel and actually take in these drills to your training sessions. So jackal, three essential layers to build a killer jackler. Now, I do prefer jackling on the front foot. So I've got things like my collision magician, where it's my boulder shoulder, smashing folks, getting them on the ground, counteracting on the fly, what we call hit feet compete. But if you jackle from a neutral or from a negative perspective, you need good entry and you need good mobility, you need good, a good base and great techniques. So let's go over that. Okay, first of all, a great jackler has a great entry. So whether I do enter going forward, which is the easiest version, or enter from a choke and I just drop in, or I drop in from someone else's tackle or from my own side on tackle, the ability to lower my level, so level change, and enter with a high level of dexterity means I need mobility. And if you try and jackle right now, you'll feel, oh my goodness, my hips are so tight, my lower back's so tight, my core's not that good. You need functional mobility training for jackling. Now, not to say, sound like a salesman, which I am going to sound like a salesman, on our site, whistlewhistle.com, go to our mobility section and our collision magician section. It'll teach you a lot of drills to make you super mobile for the breakdown. But if you are stiff at your hips and you don't have a good base to enter a breakdown, you'll enter high and you'll never pull for that ball. So first thing is entry and mobility. Okay, so, you know, supple hips that can change levels and get you into breakdowns. Second of all, your base. So your torso needs rotational strength and flexibility. So when they try and rotate you off the ball or hit you off the ball, you've got that ability to resist the rotation, but you've also got the resistance to the actual clean out. Now, imagine you're going high, long arm, long neck, and your, your base, which is your hips, are high because you don't have good mobility. You'll be springy and they'll just shove you off that ball. Okay. So if you've got powerful mobility, you can enter low and stay, stay stable and resist clean out. That is the key. So you need a strong uh, torso, which is nice and broad and strong and dexterous that can be lifted and turned and not move. And you need the ability, someone hits you at full pace to be conditioned to survive that clean out. So first is entry, second is base. Last is when you're in, so you enter super quickly and low with a good level change. You get your hands on the ball as you lift. There's various techniques you use to lift. For example, one thing I coach is getting your palms to your chin quick as you can with wide elbows and keeping the ball in the cradle as you lift you must be able to survive that shot and lift if as you get your hands on the ball the rival gets there same time and the ref says leave you must be able to get through and under and be a nose at that breakdown to slow it down jackal arts 
dark arts are something that every team needs, but it's not as easy as coaching just enter and lift. You see a lot of drills where they're just entering and lifting and it looks like they're literally post poaching Easter eggs. So I'm going to actually just show you one or two clips. I don't want to go into too many details here. This is Marco Mama, a co guy coach who was exceptional in the premiership. In this drill, he does something really explosive. I like... I like my athletes explosive. This is quite a dynamic draw. So he's explosive. He slams the ball. If you notice this motion that I coach a lot, I'm going to go back to it for you. This motion of him putting his hands on the ground and embracing and attacking the shield like that, that is building a base for postural resistance and surviving the clean out. So you see he enters hard after a slam. So I like that dynamic boom slam enter, which is really dynamic. Don't do this first. But then hands on the ground just to get him used to being smashed by the shield. Watch the next round. He'll slam, hands on the ground. He attacks the shield. He attacks the shield, which gives him body hardness. and gives him the ability to resist being cleaned out. And it's not as easy as that to get him off the ball. The next evolution there would be taking the pain and lifting at the same time. But here we're trying to give him the conditioning to have that repeated power intensity efforts time and time again. So that's like more global view of the end towards the end product. Matty Williams is already on the ball. So this is posterior train, training and surviving the clean out on its own. So he's in that nice base. His base is low. His torso is strong. He's in a good position. And he's just being whacked. And what he's doing is retreating back into the breakdown to give him that dexterity and that speed back on the ball and to teach him how to find the ball under duress and get onto it as quick as possible. So what he does is he takes the pain, counter rucks, takes the pain and counter rucks, which gives him the ability to know when I can lift and win or when I have to lift and then let go and actually counter ruck. I like this draw because he's retreating, he's strong, his base is strong, his torso is strong, and he's used to lifting the ball at the same time. So you can see how all these elements count. Ted Hill's going forward and jackling here. That's the easiest version. That's why I've kind of put it third. So he's going forward and jackling, and then he takes the pain and he realizes, release the ball, and then he counter rucks. Again, in this instant, no ball because the layer is tackle, feel yourself going forward, get your hands into that strong position and actually survive the clean out getting your hands on the ball is the easiest part in the sense of if you only coach that it's getting in and surviving the clean out that's the tougher part okay and here's something more dynamic to do with entry so you move the bag i'm not going to discuss the drill but you put the ball in last minute and the player coming in has got to enter quick and get his hands on the ball that's heading towards more the finished product so you're on the fly so here he comes in caleb comes in boom last minute he's up he bounces on the placing player just to make it more realistic, which is the bag. And then he's into that breakdown and he's lifting it while taking the pain. Okay, so that's really, really important. Now, if you look at a less mature player, this is from stuff on, say, from 2015-16. But Matthew here, this is the first time he's ever done the draw. You can see that's off his feet. And in this draw, he had never done it before. It was super dynamic. A lot of things to get ready, which right, which later on he did. This is much more dynamic. He actually had to focus on keeping that low mobility in a strong base while not giving away penalties. So when I put it together for him at the end of a, 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 a section of, of drills, he actually still hadn't got it right. He was bouncing in, he was off his feet, he was too low, and he wasn't explosive. But that's fine because you want to create good soil, and good soil is entry, it's base, and it's lifting. And you need to do that in different segments. You can't do it all at the same time. So if you look at this example again, this is a low rider position. So if you want to give folks the ability to stay low and have the endurance to stay low, you've got to give them that, give them that ingredient in your training. So although his hands are on the ground here, it's teaching him to be in that low plane. Okay. So no point saying, oh, that's a penalty. His hands on the ground. No, he's not going to jackal like that. He's getting the, the conditioning to be able to go into that breakdown super low. And the reason we do a single hand grab there is to teach him that if he entered super quick and had one chance to bounce a reach with one hand, that he could. And again, it's a nice conditioning exercise reaching with one hand. So there's numerous drills where it requires more hips, then requires more torso, then requires more entry and level change, and then requires entry, level change, hips, and lifting. And all these drills perpetuate that. You can start with some drills like this, then go into the entry drills, then you can go into surviving and clean out drills, and you can put it all together in multifaceted faceted drills where it's six, seven explosive contacts of enter, lift, survive clean out, counter ruck, hit, and then start all over again. So that for me is the key. Like in all these drills, all it is is getting 
the player, the, the athlete, used to, where's my body in real time in relation to the ball and how do I affect the speed of the ball? If you're not dynamic and explosive in the layers that you use, then they're not going to have that ability. So I hope that makes sense. In the next video, I'm actually going to discuss all my, my hit power drills, which people are saying, oh, why aren't you using arms in the hit power drills? The reason I don't use arms in short is because I want to encourage using your posterior chain, which is the low part of your body, and encouraging you to go forward with force before you even think about where's my foot, where's my arm? Because a lot of folks don't have that intensity of the explosiveness to make big shots anyway. So this is, again, the good soil, the good building block, which we're going to go over in the next video. So in the meantime, please keep the DMs coming. Thanks for the support on Instagram on the Reels. Really, really appreciate it. Simon Kerrod there is absolute dynamite. You can't but appreciate that. So go to um, Omoso Defense on Twitter if you want to have a chat or get in touch or see some other drills. Otherwise, on Instagram at the moment, we're posting virtually every single day. Please check our reels, make comments, DM us, ask questions. We're happy to get back to you. Um, if you go to our website at whistletowhistle.com, there are a lot of products, services that you can use, including being coached by me online, which we're happy to do to help you. And any questions about any of our stuff, please go to info at whistletowhistle.com and email us. Tomorrow night, we've got a Q&A, an informal one, where we're also making an announcement. If you've got a question that you want answered the Q&A, go to info at whistletowhistle.com and we'll be happy to answer that for you tomorrow night so thanks for your time i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope it made sense please whatever you do try and read the context of the drills before you make your decisions about where the drills are at see what the context is because the best thing is to build a good soil have a good soil for the growth of that that jackal tree thanks for your time